Good morning, all hapless people out there. It's Hap from Hapless Security, and today I have a probably a short video for you. That's that's my prediction today. I have a Vero mortise lock, short one, little five pinner. Uh, don't have a key for this. Don't know what's in it, but it looks like it has been rekeyed. I don't know if you can see, but the uh, first pin there has some red enamel on it. So somebody's done some work on this at some point. Anyhow, this will be a vice video. Gotta love vice videos. So let's uh, clamp this one up. Just making sure that tailpiece rotates. And uh, let's take a pick. Uh, what do you think? Oh yeah, tons of room. So this is a uh, Peterson medium hook, I think. And 25 thousandths, I think. And let's try that. Yeah, okay, top of the keyway. We're gonna use a multi-pick SP13. This is uh, one of the thicker top of the keyway tension bars. So, uh, one thing I'm noticing here is that it actually is touching the first pin before, this part's touching the first pin before this part touches the face of the lock. So I'm actually going to put it all the way in and pull it out just a touch so that I'm not interfering with my first pin. So, um, it's got quite a bit of slop in it, so there's probably a security pin or two in here. I'm gonna start off on the first pin, medium tension, first pin is binding. Got to click at a one. Yeah. Okay, go on to two. Two is binding now. Two is binding low. I might have too much tension, there we go. Click at a two and we just got a false set. Okay, click at a three, maybe. I haven't actually had a click on three, but it gave us some counter rotation. And we got a deep click, and we're back into that false set. So yeah, there's some spools in here, that's for sure. And four, binding, it's counter rotation of four. And we're back to that false set. And five, what's five got to say? Five feels set. Okay, back to four, four is set. Three, three gonna talk to us. Three feels kind of set. Two, two feels pretty set. Let's go back to one. Ah, uh, one is giving counter rotation. It's a spool. Oh, there we go. Okay, and we open. My prediction was true, but it feels like we may have five rather deep spools in here. So we're gonna find out. So let's see. That'll be the wrong tool for the job. This is also probably the wrong tool for the job. This is the wrong tool for the job. There is a constant in the universe that I will always go through three screwdrivers before I actually find the one that I need. This will never fail. Okay. There we go. All right. Oops. Let's lock her back up. Vero mortise lock, short one, little five pinner. Uh, don't have a key for this. Don't have actually. Oh no, I don't have a key. Never mind. We're gonna have to repick this thing again once I get the tailpiece off. Well, there's my uh, my boogery for the this video. Hopefully, I won't have a uh, another disaster. But you never know the fun of these but they're always weird okay I'm gonna try picking this in hand because it actually didn't give us much trouble there so back to I'm gonna use the same tools again actually now that I know what our binding order is this shouldn't actually be a difficult pick okay so two click out of two click out of three Counter rotation on four, click out of four, counter rotation on five, click out of five, let's go back up to one. Where's one? Where are you, one? There's one. Counter rotation on one, and yeah, yeah. Once you know the binding order, it's not hard anymore. Okay, let us find a follower. 
Oh, that is the follower, but that's not a gap follower. Wait a minute, is it? No, that's like a master lock follower. Okay, so we're going to have to use a shim. My gap follower is, thanks to COVID, I'm doing most of these at home. And my gap follower actually happens to be in my office. So, we'll use a shim and we'll just go for it. There we go. Very little problem there. Let's chuck that. Okay. Pin one. Yep, definitely a, a uh, lab pin. Interesting. Okay. Standard two. Pin two, standard. Pin three, standard. Also a lab pin. Pin four, standard. Looking like this whole thing has been repinned at some point. And I don't see any goofiness on that core. Oh, or do I? Is that some threading on that core? No, that's just tool marks from the milling. No, I thought there was some fine threading there. Okay, let's check out what we got in the Bible. Where are my tweezers? There they are. Also, a, uh, a rule of these videos is that I will never find the tool I need immediately. Okay, so number one is shockingly a spool. Number two is also a spool, yeah. Number three is also a spool, yeah. Number four, also a spool. And let's just hit number five here because I don't feel like dealing with springs today. Number five is, oh, very shallow little spring actually. Number five is a spool. Well now, look at that. Well, okay, maybe I will deal with springs because they all seem pretty low. Yeah, all those springs are pretty compressed. I think this lock's been in service for a long time. Because all those springs are in there, but I can't see a single one. None of them are poking up out of the Bible. Look at that. Anyhow, uh, it doesn't look like anything goofy in that core, and I wouldn't expect such. But we definitely have four, five identical spools, it looks like. Take a peek. Yeah, five identical spools. So, what I keep saying about, yeah, this has definitely been repinned, is you can see the different colors here. These different colored pins uh, are actually enamel painted pins. And in some cases, they even have a different alloy in them. Uh, and that's the way lab pinning kits work. To, I'll show you here for instance. Uh, to identify the colors. So this is actually from a, a um, uh, SFIC, this is an SFIC pin, I think. This is from my stack of random pins that I just dump. Um, but yeah, you see how they're colored and different colors. Actually, you know what? These might be American pins now that I think about it. I was taking a bunch of Americans apart the other day. So yeah, that means that somebody at some point took this lock Repended to match a specific keying, and it was probably in commercial service somewhere. Either way, I do like ferro locks. They're nice. Yeah, this would be a good practice lock to teach people how to work with spools. So those are some pretty deep spools. Anyhow, uh, that's all for today. It's just a short one. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, happy picking.